This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The Quarantine Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As multiple states try to further restrict access to abortion during the pandemic, we're turning now to a powerful new dramatic film that follows a 17-year-old girl as she travels from her small town in Pennsylvania to New York City to get an abortion without having to notify her parents. Autumn Callahan is played by Sidney Flanagan in an incredible debut performance. This is the trailer for Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always. I didn't see you at school today. I went to the doctor. What's wrong? Girl problems. Don't you ever just wish you were a dude? All the time. This is the most magical sound you will ever hear. Down beneath the ashes and stone. I'm just not ready to be a mom. Where else could you go? Nowhere in Pennsylvania. I think you should try another place. And stuff. Used to be on this dream. Who came with you today? My cousin. Do you have a place to stay tonight? I know you came from far away. I'll figure it out. This area is closed. Do not sleep here. Where's the rest of the money? La, 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 la. I want to make sure that you're safe. Personal, just answer either never, rarely, sometimes, or always. That's the trailer for Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always, a new independent film that premiered at the Sundance Film Festival in January to rave reviews. And, well, it was supposed to hit theaters in March, just as they were closing in response to the pandemic. Now the film is available online for on at-home viewing. For more, we're joined by the film's director and writer, Eliza Hittman. Eliza, congratulations on this deeply moving, profound film. Uh, you could never have predict predicted what would happen with this pandemic when your film hit. And yet it is so instructive for what women face today and young people. Uh, take us on the journey of your film, why you decided to do this, a young woman making this journey to get an abortion because of restrictions uh, on choice uh, in her home community. Yeah, I first started thinking about this film in 2012, uh, after reading about the death of Savita Halepanaver in Ireland. And just to educate myself, I began, you know, reading about the history of the Eighth Amendment in Ireland, but also thinking a lot about how restrictive, you know, each state can be in the United States. And I was thinking about the journey that women take from rural areas into urban areas when they can't get access. And for me, there's something so powerful and heroic about that journey. And I began to ask myself, why haven't I seen it represented on film before? Um, so many times films about abortion, you know, tend to focus on, you know, the moral dilemma. Um, but I, I thought it could be a really powerful story to explore how hard it is to get a legal abortion in 20, you know, in contemporary America. Um, so I began to doing I began to do research um, and a personal, you know, investigation of the issues. So I, I went to different pregnancy care centers in rural Pennsylvania and took pregnancy tests and took counseling sessions. And I consulted with Planned Parenthood in New York. And I just tried to educate myself as best possible about, you know, what the impact of these restrictive barriers look on, look like on a young woman's life. In this scene from Never Rare sometimes always, um, uh, Skylar asks her cousin Autumn why she wasn't in school. I saw you weren't at school today. I went to the doctor. 
Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. What's wrong? World problems. Bad cramps. Yeah. I get those two pretty much run through a bottle of painkillers like every month. Yeah, same. Don't you ever just wish you were a dude? All the time. So, in this scene from Never, Rarely, <laughs> Sometimes, Always, I'm going to play yet another clip. Um, Autumn goes to uh, what's called a crisis pregnancy center, um, which tells her um, uh, that her pregnancy test is positive. That looks like a positive. Um, if it's positive, is there any way it could be negative? No. A positive is always a positive. So, Eliza Hittman, talk about this so-called um, pregnancy mm -hmm. crisis center that Autumn finds in her town. Yeah, I, you know, I really wanted to put myself in the shoes of the character. And I asked myself, like, if I lived in this small town and I chose a town, you know, what would I have access to if I was a young woman in crisis? And I went into the local pregnancy care center and, um, you know, I signed in and I took a test. And, you know, I really, um, you know, went through the dialogue that the character goes through in the film. Um, and what, what struck me most from clinic to clinic is that, you know, the women who work there, they aren't, you know, licensed medical physicians. They're just layman volunteers who, um, you know, have a very specific um, religious agenda. And, um, you know, the services that they offered, you know, aren't legitimate or medical. And this is very clear in the film, when they try to scare her with a film. And, and then, I mean, this film isn't a documentary. This is a feature dramatic film. And the yeah. research you did about the journey that Autumn takes um, from Pennsylvania. And again, this is a story of a young woman, a 17-year-old, um, who is in Pennsylvania, one of 37 states that requires parental uh, involvement for minors seeking abortion. She doesn't feel comfortable telling her parents, so she makes her way with her cousin to New York City. You went on this journey yourself? I did. I I took the only Greyhound bus that left from the town in Pennsylvania, and I really, you know, got a chance to sort of absorb the landscapes that would be around the character and, you know, came in through Port Authority and tried to document my own experiences and filter them almost through the eyes of the character. Because um, it was important for me, you know, that the film be grounded in authenticity and credibility. Um, and I didn't want to just sort of write from what I had read online or in books um, and wanted to have a firsthand experience with the issues that the film explores. Now I wanted to go to a clip that, um, well, brings in the title of your film. Never, rarely, sometimes, always. Um, you actually filmed this at the Planned Parenthood Clinic in New York. Here, a Planned Parenthood Clinic staff member in um, New York City, a woman who plays her, asks Autumn a number of questions about her life. All right. So I'm going to ask you some questions. They can be really personal. And all you have to do is answer either never, rarely, sometimes, or always. It's kind of like multiple choice, but it's not a test. Okay. Okay. In the past year, your partner has refused to wear a condom. Never, rarely, sometimes, always. Um, sometimes. Okay. And your partner messes with your birth control or tries to get you pregnant when you don't want to be? Uh, Never. <clears throat> rarely. Sometimes. Always. Uh, never. Okay. Your partner has threatened or frightened you? Never. Rarely. Sometimes. Always. Why are you asking me this? I want to make sure that you're safe. Your partners threatened or frightened you? Never, rarely, 
sometimes. Always. Um, rarely. Okay. Your partner has hit you, slapped you, or physically hurt you. Never. Rarely. Sometimes. Always. Has your partner ever hit you, slapped you, or physically hurt you? Is someone hurting you? I just don't... It's okay. It's just a couple more questions, all right? Your partner has made you have sex when you didn't want to. Never. Rarely. Sometimes. Always. It's okay. I want to make sure you're safe and I want to help you if I can. I have just one more question for you, okay, Autumn? Has anyone forced you into a sexual act ever in your lifetime, yes or no? Uh, yeah. That's a clip from Never Rarely, Sometimes Always. The director and writer is Eliza Hittman. This is a deeply emotional, powerful moment um, at the core of your film, Eliza, in the Planned Parenthood Clinic in New York. Uh, she's taken this journey. Uh, she has had to wait in New York City with her uh, cousin. Um, talk more about what the dangers that young women and any woman faces if they can't uh, be in their own town and uh, do a film and the core of this moment. For me, you know, this character has been, you know, navigating these very deeply complex personal intimate issues alone. Um, even though her cousin is with her, you know, and she has, you know, support, you know, of a friend and a peer who's non-judgmental, you know, the core of what she's dealing with, she's dealing with alone. And this is, you know, a pivotal moment in the film, you know, where in, you know, the safety of a counselor's office, she breaks down from the journey of what she's been through. You know, and I think that when, you know, women don't have access, when they don't have proper sex education, you know, when they don't have resources and money, um, you know, they are, you know, left to navigate a very complex bureaucratic, you know, legal system, reproductive system alone. And this is, you know, an important moment in the film. And um, yeah, she she's crumbling. Um, we shot that scene in Margaret Sanger, you know, with the generosity of Planned Parenthood allowing us to use their facilities. And actually the counselor who's acting with her in the scene um, is a trained counselor who trained at Planned Parenthood, but I met at Choices Clinic in Queens. And Alexis McGill-Johnson, before you go, have you gotten an increased number of reports of women having to travel these long distances or any specific story in this country of what's happening to women right now? Yes, absolutely. And, um, you know, I think that that what Eliza has done here in bringing this film to life through narrative is so reflective of what we've seen, um, not just in, in, in the last few weeks around these executive orders, but what we've really honestly been seeing over the last few years as these restrictions go into place in these various states and whether or not, you know, while, while many of them are being appealed, there's still a tremendous amount of, um, of confusion around the restrictions we're seeing seeing women who, um, you know, have to find child care. They have to, you know, do exactly as um, as Adam does, find a friend who will, will travel with them, will go the journey, who may not have the resources to uh, pay for the procedure, much less, uh, you know, pay for a hotel room. And I think that that challenge of 
of um, of what we're seeing um, is uh, you know is being more intensified over the last month with these executive orders. And you know, uh, Eliza could not have predicted <laughs> that art would imitate life so so quickly. Um, but it, it's it's such an important film for us to really grapple with the the amount of restrictions that um, that women are facing. We'll send more trying. and more women to having later abortions because of their fear right now um, of going to hospitals or being told that the uh, that abortion is not essential. Yeah, absolutely. And we saw it just in, in Louisiana, as they, as you know, the Supreme Court is reviewing a case right now. And I talked to uh, to a woman who uh, very similarly went to a crisis pregnancy center, uh, was promised over and over again that they would help her get access to uh, an abortion uh, and pushed her much later into her pregnancy until a point where she had to seek a surgical abortion. And so the stigmatization, the shaming of women, not just of, of providers, and organizations like Planned Parenthood shaming women around um, around their uh, their need to seek an abortion, uh, I think, is also something really um, um, important and powerful that this film really brings out. Finally, Eliza Hitman, um, can you talk about what it means for this film to come out now? I mean, you expected, you know, movie theaters around the country to be running this film. It has just had rave reviews, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of reviews. Um, and yet, it comes at this time. In one sense, it may mean access to more people all over the globe seeing it. Also, at a time when the film festivals, one after another, are being canceled, or it looks like they might be from the Toronto International Film Festival to the Sundance Film Festival, what does this all mean for you as a director and a writer, a different kind of access? You're having Q&As online, virtual meetings with young women around the country. I watched one when you were talking to young women in Utah that was run by the Planned Parenthood there. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't expect theaters to shutter in the middle of our, you know, in the beginning of our theatrical release, but we had to pivot and, you know, you know, um, think about how the film could still reach audiences at this very pivotal, you know, this very vulnerable moment. Um, and because of, you know, everything that's happening in the states that we talked about, um, we felt like it was an opportunity um, to try and push the film, you know, into the homes of young women who might be like Autumn, who are, you know, very much alone with this issue and without access. So, you know, the film, the film's urgency tragically increases. And, you know, we hope that people are able to access it online. And we are doing a lot of grassroots, um, you know, outreach with uh, Planned Parenthood and an organization called CineReach to make sure that young people can see it, because, you know, they are the audience that I made the film for. Well, Eliza Hitman, congratulations on this film, uh, hitting at a very, to say the least, unusual time. Mm -hmm. But uh, th a film like this, critical to be seen at this time. Uh, Eliza Hitman is writer and director of Never Rarely, Sometimes, Always. And I want to thank Alexis McGill Johnson, acting president and CEO of Planned Parenthood Federation of America. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, we look at What's being tested now? What are the drugs to deal with COVID-19? What should we understand this coming as the fallout from President Trump uh, suggesting that maybe disinfectants should be ingested or uh, injected into the human body? A very dangerous suggestion that now poison centers around the country are having to deal with. Stay with us.